Science is important for a person of faith for many reasons, but perhaps the most important is that through science we're learning about God's creation and the many for wonderful things that He has made for us. And arguably one of the most wonderful things that He has made is the animals. The animals were truly a tremendous gift from our loving Father in Heaven. They, they're, they make the world such a beautiful place by their presence. There's an elegance to them that we just find endlessly fascinating. And they've also been a great source of technological inspiration for us in that we've been able to study God's designs. <clears throat> and they're the part of God's creation that we love the most. Most people love animals. We've made pets of many of them, not just dogs and cats and birds, but uh, for some even insects have been made pets. These are my dogs, um, Willie, Eli and Chelsea, uh, no, all no longer with me. They've all, all died of old age, but uh, I sure did love those dogs. And uh, I thanked God for them often, and you should as well. When you're showering some love upon your pet at that moment, stop and thank God for giving you that uh, tremendous gift, uh, something that you love and that you... Uh, that you enjoy so much. Thank God for that animal that you have. Well, more than any other design feature found in the cosmos, the ability of animals to fly has caused us to marvel and be inspired uh, to achieve this ability technologically. From the smallest insect to the largest soaring bird, the ability of animals to fly has been a source of great awe for us and envy. They move with such grace and such elegance, they're able to traverse great distances with ease. The birds can effortlessly glide or catch a thermal and ride it skyward. <clears throat> but travel for humans has always been very laborious, especially over rough terrain or, or when, when there's elevation gain. But this ability to, of, of birds to fly has been one of the, the parts of God's creation that cries out to us that it was made and declares something about God himself. Remember, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. God has revealed himself to us in, the, in his creation. Well, for much of his life, Leonardo da Vinci was fascinated by the phenomena of animal flight. <clears throat> he produced many studies, culminating in his Codex on the Flight of Birds in 1505. Leonardo da Vinci said, A bird is an instrument operating through mechanical laws, which is in the capacity of man to be able to make with all of its motions. In an attempt to make a flying machine, Leonardo da Vinci drew several plans, including this machine he referred to as his great bird. Well, this practice of studying God's design and using them to develop or improve our own designs has been a huge, hugely important part of human technological discovery and advancement. Countless technologies could be mentioned here. Velcro was invented after studying how burrs cling to animal hair. We've de designed buildings after studying the heat dissipating design of termite mounds. <clears throat> We've designed swimwear after studying the friction-reducing shark skin. We've uh, studied gecko feet and the way they adhere to surface through electrostatic uh, tractions and are using that to, define it, uh, to design adhesives. We've studied humpback well fins and used them to improve uh, uh, turbine blades. We've studied the morphing ways that bird wings change and, and are using that to improve airplane wings. And of course, the insect has long inspired robotic designs. Well, lobsters have an amazing ability that has caused intensive study. They have an ability to see in waters that are extremely dark and murky. And after some uh, extensive study of the lobster eye, we found out that they have a compound eye that is very different from the uh, the eye that's possessed by your insects that have hexagonal facets and bend or reflect, refract light onto the retina. The unique lobster eye incorporates square facets that are arranged radially forming an optic array with a 180 degree field of view. These facets are tiny square shaped tubes with walls that act as mirrors to reflect the incoming light onto the retina, a technology known as reflective superpositioning. 
Well, the lobster's amazing eye design was copied by uh, some, some uh, engineers. The Physical Optics Corporation used the uh, lobster eye design to develop this handheld device known as the Lexid, which stands for the Lobster Eye X-ray Imaging Device. This new handheld imaging system works by emitting low-level x-rays, which are then focused and intensified by the lobster eye optics. Well, one of the features that makes our world so beautiful and pleasing is the tremendous colors that abound. God made the world full of such beautiful colors because he loves us and wanted to make a home that is pleasing to us but perhaps also to reveal to us a part of his divine nature that is not otherwise visible to us now. Colors in the creation are made by modifying the wavelength of photons that are coming to our eyes. Pigments do this by absorb, absorbing some wavelengths of photons, but reflecting others back. So for example, plants reflect back green, and so they look green to us, but they absorb the other photons and use that for photosynthesis. But some colors are not made by pigments. Now, this is the blue morpho butterfly wing, shown here and on both sides. Well, the bottom or underside of the blue morpho's wing has pigments that make it brown. The yellows and browns that you see there are from the mel pigment melanin, the same pigment, pigment that gives us all of our various shades of brown. But the blue on the top of the blue morpho's wing is not made by a pigment. Instead, it's produced by iridescence. Iridescence, like you see here in this soap bubble, is the property of certain surf surfaces which causes them to appear to change color as the angle of view changes. However, the blue morpho's wing does not change color significantly. It is a brilliantly uniform blue that is extremely bright also. Well, in 2001, the mystery of the blue morpho's blue wing was discovered after studying its, the scales on its wing with very high power magnification. Well, this is a normal butterfly wing showing the scales that cover its wing. And I'm going to blow up these scales for you to show you again what the normal butterfly wing scale looks like here. This is a single scale of a butterfly wing that's now magnified at 1,000 power using a, a scanning electron microscope. Here it is at 5,000 power showing you the structural design of a normal butterfly wing scale. Well, you notice it has these long beams that run its length and those beams are connected together by a cross brace. Well, when they looked at the blue morphos scale, it was different. It did not have that cross brace. Upon close examination, it was discovered that the blue morpho butterfly wing scales are structurally different from the normal scales and serve as biophotonic crystals. Instead of those beings being connected together, they had repeated ridges down their links that you see here. Well, these ridges have reflective surfaces that reflect light repeatedly at successive layers, producing an intensifying effect within the tetrahedral or diamond-like structural arrangement of the scales. It's an amazing design feature that's found there in the Blue Morpho butterfly wing scale, a design that has now caught, caught, caught the interest of some engineers. A number of engineering concepts have, have now arisen in the last few years based on this discovery in the Blue Morpho wing scale. Tingen fibers, Limited has made the world's first structural chromogenic fibers called Morphotext. These fibers that can be used by all varieties of textiles are, can be produced in a variety of colors, but have no dyes or pigments that are used to produce these colors. Instead, it's, it's produced by controlled iridescence. <clears throat> well, Qualcomm also used the Blue Morpho uh, scale design to build a display device called the Mirasol. And again, this based on the Blue Morpho scale design. This, the design of this display, instead of using transmitted or produced light, uses ambient light that it reflects back using controlled iridescent to produce the various shades of uh, red, green, and blues. 
Well, despite the long-standing practice of <clears throat> of searching for designs in biology, secular scientists refuse to acknowledge what, what this practice really affirms. I want you to listen to uh, this definition of biomimicry from a, a scientist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Listen to his definition because it's very telling. Biomimicry is the process of understanding the designs and materials we find in biology and adapting them for human use. So over the millions and millions of years of evolution, there's tremendous wisdom and efficiency in biological systems. Well, notice that he refers here to designs found in biology and the tremendous wisdom behind it all. Secular scientists can see the tremendous evidence of design that we've discovered in, bio in the biological world, but they impart to nature the wisdom and creative ability of our Father God. Animals are so spe spectacularly well-designed that they cry out, I am created. They testify to us that they have been created, but scientists refuse to acknowledge the witness of their own eyes. In Romans 1, again, Paul describes what is happening today in the scientific community. It says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so that they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools." Well, when we consider the death paid by God's own Son for our sins, we should not be surprised to find that our world has been so well preserved, prepared by our loving Father in heaven. We have discovered spectacular examples of engineering and artistic design in the animal world. The world we occupy was equipped with everything we need in terms of materials and energy, but it was also made to be beautiful and pleasing to us and to have things like animals that have brought such joy and comfort to our lives. Animals truly cry out they were designed. We can learn about God's qualities by observing what he has made. God made the world full of wonders because he is wonderful. He made beautiful things because he is beautiful. He made things that are tremendously complex and mysterious because he is beyond our understanding. He made things of enormous power because he is powerful. He made things we constantly marvel at because he is marvelous. Truly, his eternal power and divine nature are on display within the creation to reveal himself to us. Praise the Lord, for truly he is good. <laughs>